Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Kajawa. We're at Geneva, Illinois, on my Atlantic Great Western Railroad. Today I'm going to show you an interesting idea that I've used to enhance the operation and the looks of your center beam flat cars. This is A. Roberts Manufacturing Company. You get quite a variety of products in. Uh, they get all-door cars. You can see there in the back the Boise Cascade and the Green Bay and Western. That's protected lumber. They also get bulkhead flat cars with protected lumber loads. Those are made by Jaeger. They also get open lumber loads. Those are a Atherin product. And they get center beam cars. Uh, this is a custom product I got off of eBay, but uh, I also use a lot of the Walther's loads, and I'm going to show you a combination of the Walther's load and these custom loads and how to make them look better and operate better. But first, let's do a little rail fan. We're across from the depot in Geneva, Illinois. That's the Chicago Northwestern East-West Main Line. The Elgin local we're waiting on is in the siding at Aurora, Illinois. He's holding the siding there with a southbound Milwaukee, Kansas City intermodal train. We're in Geneva, Illinois. This is the Elgin Local on the Atlantic and Great Western. This is my imaginary railroad. Atlantic and Great Western serves quite a bit of the East and Midwest. The Elgin Local seen here has dropped its train off so it doesn't foul the Chicago Northwestern Diamonds. It's got two cars to set out at A. Roberts Manufacturing two center beams that'll be unloaded when they get a chance. The Elgin Local runs out of Arrowhead Yard in suburban Chicago. It runs up to Elgin, Illinois, runs around its train, and goes back. It does all the switching along the way for all the three trains.
The local now is going to drift back down to get its train, and we'll head north. It's got one more town to go before it turns around and heads home. As you can see, like most model railroads, still got a lot of work to do, a lot of scenery to do, but I spent a lot of time operating my layout to make sure it operates the way I want to before I put the scenery down. Once these cars are spotted, of course they need to be unloaded. If you've had any of these Walther's cars, and you've used the Walther's load on them, you know that once you put it on there, it's basically stuck. They've got three pins on the back that when they lock together, it is a real chore to get them off. So I'm gonna show you on the workbench what I did, but I'll show you how easy it is to unload these cars. There you go. Now, you'll probably see the secret to holding these on there are some magnets. So, we get back to the workbench. I'll show you how to do that on these cars. And you can see the local's ready to come back and get these and the next day it runs. Let's watch that local run north before we go to the workbench. Welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. Thanks for watching all my other videos and thanks for all the comments. It's pretty cool to see that uh, some of you guys are actually watching them and I've seen some people actually uh, follow the clinics and uh, sent me some pictures. So check out the, my uh, Facebook page to see those comments and pictures. As I said on my other uh, previous videos, I'm really into operation and I want to be able to load and unload my cars. So these center beam cars, I'll show you the, what I was talking about before. They have these interlocking pins. And once you stick those together, they're real hard to get apart. So what I usually do is I just grab a set of cutters and I'll cut off the excess on the outside too. I've already done this one. And you don't want to see glue dry, but I measured this one here to the same height as this one, trimmed it off, sanded them both smooth, and I glued the magnets on so they attract. You don't want the magnets to push them apart, of course. So that's basically all you need to do. Once you get that done, they'll just sit right on the car, and this side will hold the other side on. They won't tip off, but you can easily remove them at your uh, industry. Now, your the magnets I got were this from, I got them from our local hobby shop, the McLean Depot in McLean, Illinois. Uh, it's a pretty cool place if you're ever traveling on... Uh, 55 between Chicago and St. Louis. It's about halfway. It's a great place to stop, see some trains, and there's a really nice restaurant right across the street. So I'm sure you can get these Walmart, some button magnets. Uh, probably Hobby Lobby has magnets. Doesn't make any difference uh, what kind you get. The original ones I had were these kind of rectangular magnets. 
Now these wouldn't sit on these pins. So I got some Plastruct. And it doesn't make any difference what kind. This just happened to be quarter inch. And I just glued them in here, stacked them up, and glued the magnet on them. Works the same principle as long as you line up the magnets. They'll click right on there. They won't fall off as you're going around the corners. Perfect. Now, I've got these other cars with these loads I got off of eBay. These are a little different, is that they don't, they're solid wood with a covering on them. So, the technique I used on these, I took one of the cars and I glued the magnet in there, but what I've done is I just drew an oval shape and then I would go through with a X-Acto knife and scrape off the paint and then glue the magnet to that one. And I would do the same corresponding on this one so they click together. Easily unloaded, but they're, they stay on the car. So I got another technique I'm going to show you to make these loads look even more realistic. Now, if you're not familiar with the center beam cars, once they'll load these cars up, they put a strap on there. And that's what these tie-downs are along the bottom here. They take the strap, tie it up, ratchet them down so they run across there. Now, we still want the car remove the load removable from the car. So, to simulate that, get it as realistic as we can, we want to simulate those straps, but we just don't want them attached to the car. So, what I've done is I've gone through with a pencil and made just a tiny mark right above each one of these. all the way down the car. Take the load off. I have this extra fine point Sharpie. I have a square. I line it up with the mark. and I draw the strap on there. Then I take the square, put it on the top, line it up, and this simulates the strap going over the top of the car. And I'll show you that on this car. I think that makes quite the difference. So, the I don't know if you can see it in the movie, but the last three of these are the Sharpie. The rest of these are a different technique. Not to say anyone's right or wrong. It depends on which one you'd rather use. You know when your train's running by a scale speed? I don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference. but. One thing you could consider doing is using this. I have these Federal Graphics. There's a, quite a few different companies that make this uh, tape. It kind of looks like electrician's tape, but extremely small. This is 164th. I found this on the internet. It's uh, made by Chart Pack. This Federal Graphics. There's a couple other ones out there. Okay, I found the end of the tape. It's kind of hard to do on that. But it's a very similar technique. I mark the bottom just the same way with the little pencil marks. This tape is surprisingly sticky.
and I, I think I'll take a piece of clear tape and cover this up to hold that little tape in the long run. But as you can see, this doesn't take really that long. Just line it up on the marks. You can eyeball this. This is probably a little bit more realistic because if you aren't real careful with that Sharpie, you can actually see the little gap where the Sharpie didn't go into the uh, hole there, where this one is a continuous line. This is probably my preferred technique, but I just thought I would show you the other one in case you can't find this tape or don't want to go through the trouble. That, tape, it does take a little bit longer. So there's your strapping. And I think if you take a look at these side by side, you can see what a difference that does make with the strapping on it. Now, I've done the same technique on this car. Here's the before, and here's the after. You notice how they line up with the ratcheting straps. I just think that's a quick, it's a quick technique, but it makes a world of difference when you see the cars running down the track. Well, that's about all for this one. Pretty quick technique. Uh, magnets and some tape. You make your uh, center beam cars look a lot more realistic and operational. One thing about having removable loads, it's cheaper. You don't have to buy a car with a load on it and a car that runs empty. So you've cut your car costs in half. Thanks again for watching. Please check out my other videos on Facebook and YouTube and check out my Atlantic Great Western Railway on Facebook. Take care.